What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, I wanted to highlight one of the most complete procedural material and asset libraries on the Blender market, Sanctus Library. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked about Sanctus Library on the channel before, but um, I wanted to talk about it again because he's just added so many different things to the library. And that's one of the cool things about this particular add-on is it's a library of materials and generators and decals and all sorts of different stuff can be that can be used to generate things really quickly and he is constantly adding to it so he just keeps adding new things and so um, I wanted to kind of do kind of an updated video talking about it but you can check out Sanctus library on the blender market if you do see this in the next like week or so um, it is on sale during the blender market summer sale if you don't it's still a great value but um, there's a few different versions you can download there's the free version or the light version it's going to come with a smaller library of assets and materials. Um, so if you just want to support the developer and get the light version, there's a version right here where you can do that. And then there's also options in here for a personal use and a commercial use of everything in the library. So, um, so let's kind of take a look at the way that this works. So um, this is a tool that's got a little bit of everything from fabrics, decals, um, other things like that, generators for like bookshelves, um, just a ton of different stuff. But first thing we want to do is we want to jump over into Blender and make sure that we get it installed. All right, so there's two ways you can install this. You can either install the add-on file or the asset browser version. So if you want to install just the add-on, you can just go to install and your preferences under add-ons. All right, so then we can just find that installer file, double click on it, and then enable it and Sanctus Library should be enabled. Um, one thing to note about this, I don't know why, but version 2.7 was giving me an error message. So I'm sure that's something that'll be updated, but for now, if you get that error message, you can just bring down version 2.6 and install it. And that seems to be working in my Blender 3.6.1. Um, but that's going to, once you have that enabled, that's gonna give you the ability to access all of these different materials over here um, in the window on the right-hand side. Now, alternatively, um, there is also a zip file that comes in that's the asset library version and if you want to you can just go into your file paths and just add that zip file and so what you want to do is you just want to unzip that zip file um, and then find that folder and just click on add asset library and when you do that these are now going to show up down here now I do like to make sure that I set these to append rather than append reuse data um, when I set this up but then if you scroll down in here take a look at your asset browser, you should have access to assets Sanctus library right here. So then you can access these either way, either through the um, either through the asset browser or through the viewport panel over here. Um, honestly, the viewport panel over here might be a little more user friendly, um, but you can do it either way. Okay, and so we're just gonna use the sample file that comes along with this um, in order to preview some of these materials. Um, but basically what this does is this gives you the ability over here on the right-hand side or in your asset browser to apply these procedural materials in here. And so there is a little performance note on these different materials over here. So when you click on this, right, this is gonna give you the ability to select a material and apply it to a surface. Like if I took this plaster wall, selected it, and then had this uh, shader ball selected, I could click on apply material. And what that's gonna do is that's just gonna take this wall material and it's going to apply it to this object right here. Now notice how in the lower right hand corner there's different colors in here as well as different letters. So what that means is that means that it's going to be basically giving you information about um, if these work well in EV or cycles, right? So this one, for example, if I was to go with the aging tiles material right here, notice how it has a C over here. That's indicating that this material is intended to be used in cycles with the displacement and everything else. If you try to apply that material inside of Eevee and render it that way, or even in your material preview, things might run a little bit slower. So um, it's just worth noting that um, you might have some performance issues if you try to do that inside of uh, this window. So these are more intended to be used inside of cycles itself. So just be aware of that when you are working with the different materials 
variables inside of Sanctus library. So if they just have the green, that means they're going to work well with both, right? So just be aware that some of the materials are different types, but we've got a bunch of different types of materials in here. And you can view them all by clicking on the drop down right here. And notice how there are a ton of different options in here. So for example, you've got like emissive materials. Um, so these emissive materials are going to allow you to basically place like an emission on an object. You've got your buildings, um, which are basically going to be materials designed um, that basically kind of align with building materials, right? So if I pick this polka dots right here and apply this, you can see how it's kind of like a polka dot material in here. And so you can apply these different materials in here and you're going to get these different looks. Now, the cool thing about these materials is if I was to click on this object right here, and then click on the drop down. Notice how I have the ability to adjust different things about the material. So I can adjust the width and height of panels, right? So if I put in like a 0.1 and a 0.1, notice how that material gets way smaller. And um, if I put in like a 0.5 and a 0.5, it's going to get bigger. And we may want to apply one of these just to a flat plane, just so you can see what that's doing in here. So I've got a plane right here. I'm going to apply that material. And in this case, we'll just use the existing material that's already in here. But this is specifically designed to have things that are editable and adjustable, right? You can adjust the scale. You can adjust the lights in here. So notice how as I bring this up and you'll probably see it better if I toggle on bloom in here, um, but notice how those lights are going to get brighter or dimmer depending on what these settings are. So the whole point of this whole thing is um, to give you the ability to be able to pre-procedurally adjust the materials in Blender. So um, if I take the anti-slip, drop it in here and apply it, we'll use the existing that's in here, you can do the same thing, right? You can do things like adjusting the scale and the size in here. You can adjust the seed, which notice how when you adjust the seed, it's kind of like moving the dirt and grime in here. So you can use this to adjust if a material looks more worn, if it looks more new, other things like that. Um, you can also adjust things like the color of the material. So the power of this add-on is really in those procedural materials. Now I will note, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm going to pick one of the rougher tiles, maybe this old brick right here. And I want to apply it to that surface. Notice how it even gives me a note saying that it recommends that I shift to cycles. But when you shift to cycles, you might notice that this currently doesn't look that good, right? It looks like super flat. Um, you can come in here and make adjustments to the different uh, maps and other things like that. But just in general, it looks kind of flat. The reason for that is because we need to make sure that this is set up where it has enough geometric detail in here to use the different maps, specifically the displacement maps in here. The displacement map is going to allow this to move the mesh up and down in order to make things look a little more, um, a, a little more three dimensional. And so there's two things we need to do here. The first is we need to go over into cycles and we need to set everything to experimental mode. That is going to allow us to jump back over into our modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier to this object. And so when you do that, what you want to do is you want to make sure you check the box for adaptive subdivision, which is only going to show up if you have experimental mode selected. But once you do this, and we're going to go ahead and set this to simple subdivision. Once you do this, notice what this is doing is this is actually subdividing the object so that it can actually move the individual geometry up and down in here. Then we can go back into our displacement and do things like adjusting the strength of the displacement on this object so that we can get different results, right? So from the super rough to this, which is a little bit more flat, um, you can adjust that displacement map in here. That's the power of the procedural materials. And so there are just a ton of different materials in here. So I've got this fabric material. I could switch this over to, um, let's pick something else that's good in Eevee. Um, we could do like this velvet material, other things like that. And again, these are all fully procedurally procedural, giving you the ability to adjust things like the color, other things like that. And so they render out really good and they look really good in Blender. So tons of different options in here. In addition though, he also has the, um, he also has a bunch of geometry node assets in here and they do different things, right? So he's got effects, he's got um, like procedural objects in here. So if I go to the effects, for example, and I apply that to the, 
apply that to this object, right? So if I click on apply asset to object, what it's going to do is it's gonna take this object and use geometry nodes in order to generate this kind of like Lego look in here like this. Now um, you can go over into your geometry node settings and adjust things like the scale. Um, I'm going to bring this back out of um, rendered mode right here, but you can use this in order to adjust the scale. You can use it to adjust the thickness of the blocks, other things like that. So um, very cool um, from the ability of being able to change that to a Lego object. You've also got other things in here. Like for example, let's say I was to jump over into the furniture. So we've got the bookshelf and the sofa. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a shift A and I'm just gonna add um, probably just a cube over here. But what I wanna do is I wanna click on the option for apply asset to object. And so what that's going to do is that's going to basically apply a geometry node modifier to this object that is going to generate the shelving procedurally with books. So if you wanted to generate um, a bookshelf or something like that, you're able to do that with geometry nodes kind of live. So, and there, there's a bunch of other assets in here as well. So things like rope and cable generators, um, the tools for creating like a turntable animation, other things like that, just a bunch of stuff in here. So I'm gonna go back to this shader ball really quick. And what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at the decals. So the decals are really cool because it's got a bunch of built-in decals that are in here that you can use in order to add almost like stickers in here. So let's adjust the material on this. We'll just go to a metal, maybe um, just one of these anodized or maybe this hammered. So we'll go with the hammered. But if we go over to our decals, right? and we put our 3D cursor on this object and click on add decal and we mouse over this object, we can click in here and we can place the decal on the surface like this. And so basically what it does is it acts like a sticker that we've placed on that object. And we can adjust things like the scale of the object as well as moving it around on the surface just by using the move function. So you can use this in order to quickly add these in here. I think if you move it too far from the initial location that you set in here, you might have some issues with that. Um, but you can use basically anything that's inside of this library in order to quickly add decals to objects. And so we're just going to scale this down a little bit and that's gonna work fine. Now you do have the ability to add a custom image object. So if you click on add custom and then you pick something, so I'm just going to use my logo right here. We'll just kind of rotate around and we'll click on this object. It's going to take your object and generate a decal and place it on the surface. And so literally all I had to do was just select um, an image file and then click on here in order to place that and you can come over into the settings and adjust rotations um, Whatever you want in here um, Using the settings over here. You, you also have the ability to add things like damage in here So if you want to add um, little rips or tears or anything like that in the image um, You can use the sliders in order to do that notice how I can use the seed I can use the seed in order to kind of randomize that in here So um, really easy to use the decals function inside of sanctus library So from a procedural materials standpoint, this is one of the best libraries that I'd seen But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what you think as always Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video Thanks guys.